title of my thesis and my talk today is Stroke, Are We Only Just a Heartbeat Away? And today um, I'm going to introduce my thesis with the help of a guy named Bob. Uh, Bob is your average 54-year-old Irishman. He's married. He has two kids and one grandkid. Uh, he works five days a week, enjoys his Guinness cold on a Saturday night, and he loves a fry on a Sunday morning. He also plays a little five-a-side soccer with the over-40s club during the week, but he's not actually very good, and he's kind of mostly the water boy, to be honest. But today, as he runs up the stairs to grab his gear, Bob starts to feel a little unwell, and he becomes short of breath. As he grabs the last step, he actually collapses, and his all strength leaves his body. Bob is experiencing something known as atrial fibrillation, which is an irregular heartbeat, and it's the most common irregularity, not only in Ireland, but across the globe. It goes completely undetected in patients. And what happens is that the left atrium fibrillates or flutters completely out of control and out of sync with the rest of the heart. Bob collapses and is rushed to the hospital. The ambulance must be taking a bit of time. <laughs> Uh, Bob is not out of the woods just yet, because during atrial fibrillation, as we said, the left atrium begins to flutter. Blood can pool in this atrium, and when blood pools, it clots. And this clot can eventually travel down to the left ventricle. You can see the little black clot there. And in one single heartbeat, it can be expelled into the cardiovascular system. Once here, the clot has the option to travel towards the brain, and this is where the real problem could start for Bob and his family. If the clot travels towards the brain, it could become stuck within the tiny vessels of the brain and cause a stroke. And stroke, as we all know, is very scary. Um, at least 2,000 people every year die uh, as a result of stroke, and it's the third largest killer worldwide. Um, atrial fibrillation will increase Bob's risk of stroke fourfold, and this will increase even more as Bob gets older. It is recognised that up to 30% of strokes can be as a result of these type of clots from atrial fibrillation, but there's not a whole pile of information out there on them, what they're made of and how they behave, and this is where I'm hopefully standing in, so hopefully this video will work and explain what's going on, and you can see a little clot moving around there. So what I do is I generate clots and make my own clots from animal blood. I've made a really good friend with the local butcher. Um, I then gather CT scans from atrial fibrillation patients and healthy individuals and create 3D geometries um, of the anatomy from the heart to the brain. Then using a 3D printer, which is seriously cool, I can create geometries just like this and actual physical silicone models of these vasculatures. This is the first study of its kind here. Hopefully it will aid in the help of future design of uh, tools and devices to treat stroke. Uh, clinicians are really involved in this and it is, it's helping them understand clot development and occlusion and the occurrence of stroke. But mostly it's for people like Bob and everyone out there that could just be a heartbeat away from a serious devastation of stroke. And the most important question, is Bob okay? He's actually fine. He'll be home for Christmas. <laughs> 